A flying wing aircraft blends the fuselage into the wings, creating a wedge-shaped plane. Although a flying wing has superior lift and fuel efficiency, historically it's proved hard to maneuver. The Germans produced a jet-powered flying wing aircraft in 1944. But pressures of war kept designers from solving the craft's many technical difficulties. The U.S. Air Force began developing flying wing aircraft, but shut down the program in 1948, when a crash killed two test pilots and three engineers. Was technology taken from the Roswell crash responsible for the eventual perfection of the flying wing? If these UFOs existed and they were just thousands of years more advanced than what we are familiar with today, I'm not sure that we would be able to understand it. Reverse engineering entails copying everything from an existing machine, from complicated electronics down to the chemical composition of basic materials. It's no easy task, even when the technology being copied is from right here on Earth. The B-29 bomber is probably the best example of reverse engineering. Through the Cold War, World War II, World War I, the military has been doing reverse engineering uh, of foreign aircraft. Famous cases of, of the U.S. getting their hands on Russian aircraft and reverse engineering the functionality or some of the advanced performance characteristics of the Russian aircraft. And it goes both ways. The Russians are doing the same thing to us. It's undisputed that countries routinely reverse engineer technologies from other countries. Could they be applying the same techniques to objects not of this world? Stanley gave the order, if we can get uh, B-29, try to rebuild it. July 31st, 1944. A B-29 bomber experiences engine problems and is forced to land near Vladivostok, USSR. Later, two other B-29s also make emergency landings in Russia. Another crashes in Siberia. All four craft are kept by the Soviets. Their reverse engineering effort creates the Tupolev Tu-4. The Russians were ordered to rebuild the B-29 bolt per bolt, uh, one and one, five thousand pieces. Ironically, highly complex machinery is not always the biggest challenge. The Russians were not able to reproduce everything. Look at the Russians with the B-29 having difficulty just to make a small step forward. Now imagine getting a UFO that might be so incredibly sophisticated, so incredibly advanced. It could be from a civilization thousands of years engineering-wise ahead of us. Maybe we could reproduce the geometries of those components in that UFO, but for us to understand the fundamental physics, that's a huge stretch. The claim that the U.S. government is actively engaged in reverse engineering alien craft has always been highly controversial. But recently, new material has been released purporting to be photographic and documentary evidence of recovered alien technology. Proof at last, or something else. Whoa. Today's mainstream technology could have been wholly developed by our planet's cleverest species, us. But the idea that we've reverse engineered some devices from alien technology continues to intrigue. As with these photographs, allegedly of U.S. military drones inspired by real UFOs. MUFON director James Carrion notes striking similarities between the photographs of the purported military drone and a famous UFO crash in Pennsylvania. December 9, 1965. Thousands of people in six states and Ontario, Canada, report seeing a brilliant fireball streak overhead. A number of frantic calls from witnesses were recorded on tape and still survive. Across the sky came a huge white ball of fire. There was an object in the sky 15 minutes before five. Metallic debris reportedly drops over northern Ohio, and the object causes sonic booms in western Pennsylvania. According to witnesses, it finally lands in the woods outside Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, 30 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Local firemen rush to the scene, but discover a U.S. military unit has already cordoned off the area. Soldiers reportedly take the mysterious object to an undisclosed location, presumed to be Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. The official explanation is that a meteor has crashed. But numerous witnesses and newspapers believe that this was in fact a UFO. 
and that it has played a key role in the U.S. military's reverse engineering program. If you look at eyewitness information who actually saw the Kecksburg object, they saw it make a 25 degree trajectory change and some sort of intelligent control when it came down. And eyewitness testimony states that what they found was an intact craft on the ground. It had made a trench where it had come down after it broke through a bunch of trees and that it was retrieved intact by the military, put on a flatbed truck and transported out of the area. Carrion's research has revealed that numerous eyewitnesses of the Kecksburg crash reported seeing strange symbols on the base of the UFO. When the town erected a monument to the crashed object, the symbols were prominently recreated. And now, 40 years after the crash, they are apparently turning up in another context. So we see the correlation between the symbols on the drone craft and the symbols that were seen on the Kecksburg. If the Carrot documents are indeed real, they indicate the government may be using private industry to reverse engineer. Private entities have another advantage. They're immune to freedom of information requests. That object that is in that image is completely inconsistent with the physics of aircraft flying. For example, the mass distribution or the center of gravity is way off. So there's no way that could fly through air at high speed which leaves me thinking there's some uh, miracle technology that's way beyond anything we can understand. Maybe there's a f it's enveloped in a force field and that's providing their dynamics. You know, it's speculation, but it's, it's important to look at the physics of what's being presented. Have you had a chance to analyze this? Oh yeah, these are some of the drone images. Dr. Bruce McAbee was an optical physicist for the United States Navy, specializing in imagery analysis. He and Ted Ackworth analyzed the drone photographs. You know, these pictures were essentially posted on the internet. I should point out that clearly this is not an aerodynamic type of structure that we're looking yeah, at here. It's, it's if, it's, if it really is real and flying along, it's using some extraordinary means. Uh, it could be extremely lightweight and blowing air downwards, I suppose. It's immediately obvious that these vehicles, if real, defy conventional aerodynamics. In order to fly, they would have to use some unknown method of propulsion and lift. It seems that just about every case, the, the quality of the images is very low. In this case, with the military drones, for once, we have what appear to be very well exposed digital photographs. Wait a second, it's missing, it's missing some pieces of the yeah, craft. Well, you've done this is it early? Twice. Maccabee notes that one of the earliest photographs, allegedly taken in May 2007, differs from a photo said to be taken a month later. The most recent image shows a more highly developed craft. And this is it early? So I said this is a more developed version of it. So you're saying that there, there are a series of images that were posted that right. show a progression of features on the craft? Well, you can see how this initial version was. It had spires or spikes that came up. It had a circular donut-shaped main body. It had a tail going out to the side and right. a spike coming off. And yet, it. over some sequent uh, images, it's developed or, or grown more yeah, components. Either that means this craft is actually deploying additional hardware or parts, or somebody is building up a CGI model and developing the complexity of the model over the sequence of the photos.